I was wondering, um, you mentioned earlier that Neanderthals, the different, the, there are differences between Neanderthals and humans, the like, physical differences, like the flatter uh, jaw or whatever. Right. The, and I was wondering, is it, isn't it better to determine whether someone, something is in a certain species by genetics rather than by physical characteristics? Because, you know, there are like differences between every human. Some people are taller, some people are shorter and stuff like that. I was... Yeah, yeah uh, great yeah. question. question. Um, well, when you're, typically when you're studying the fossil record, all you have available to you is the, the fossil remains, which means you have no other choice but to use the anatomical data to try to establish whether or not uh, <clears throat> Neanderthals, in this instance, and humans are of the same species or distinct species. And we have a unique opportunity with Neanderthals in the fact that we do have the, the ability to extract genetic material from Neanderthal remains, and then we can use that data in conjunction with the anatomical data, data to establish whether or not Neanderthals are the same or different species. So, and the data indicates, as I said, in, uh, talked about tonight, that they are distinct species. Uh, but genetic data is probably preferred, but we don't have that luxury with the other hominids at this point in time, and probably won't. So it, it's a unique opportunity that we have. Well then, if you're judging by physical appearances only because you don't have genetic data, wouldn't it be jumping to extreme conclusions to assume that because of physical similarities you are taking a step up, like evolving from one thing to another, just because of physical similarities, because there are physical similarities in everything? Um, yeah, but you also are able to see as well physical differences. And so the question is, is the difference significant enough to warrant the separate classification, uh, or the classification as a separate species. Uh, but what, in addition to just the anatomical data, there's other data that you can access from the fossil remains, and that's the developmental patterns as well. <clears throat> and so, for example, there's been some very good work done on Homo erectus, uh, looking at its developmental patterns. What um, <clears throat> anthropologists do is they look at the pattern of tooth eruption and the tooth eruption pattern tells you how old the individual was, whether it was uh, an adult or whether it was a juvenile. And then you can also look at tooth wear to also get an, a an estimate of age at the time of death. Uh, and so from that data, you're able to essentially reconstruct the developmental behavior, or, or not the behavior, but trajectory of that individual. And so uh, <clears throat> recent work indicates that for example, Homo erectus did not develop in a manner that was intermediate between chimps or the apes and modern humans, but rather developed in a way that was very much like an ape. And so that's another piece of data that you could bring to bear in addition to the anatomical data that would tell you that, that Homo erectus is likely not the same species as modern humans. So you're using all the data that you have to bear uh, you, and, and you're trying to draw uh, the best conclusions you can from the data. Um, but it doesn't mean that you can necessarily always draw extremely sound conclusions. But that's a problem not only for us, but for evolutionists as well, looking at the fossil record. It's a problem everybody has to deal with.